Hi everyone, I want to take a moment to talk about the Solo T16 Red Necromancer build that I've been playing quite a lot recently to gear up my Necromancer for the solo pushes and I've been farming hundreds, of, I don't know, thousands of keys or something with this build by now. It is not really the best build in the entire game but it's probably the best build you can play on the Necromancer and it is quite fast. Essentially, you don't really have to do much, you cast your Land of Dead once in a while and you summon your Skeleton Mages and they run with you and one-shot everything around you. So that's the basic idea of the build. You just basically collect the loot, you don't really have to do much, and every few seconds or so you summon more mages and that's about it. So very simple playstyle and there's not really much to look out for, but I'll walk you through it in this video. So I'll show you my in-game character here. So this is what I have been using. I have a Cypher to Cycle, this is a very important damage multiplier for those mages. We also have the Circle of Naluge Evolve. This is very useful because you get two extra mages, sorry, one extra mage and the last four extra seconds. And this allows you to just not cast those mages very often. And there's also the Haunted Visions that gives you a Simulacrum permanently. And while it says that it cannot duplicate Skeletal Mage anymore, it does exactly that. So you cast the mages. And the Simulacrum will also summon one, so you get 4 every time you cast. So there's a cap of 10, and you get them with only 3 casts, and you get really close to the cap of just 2 casts, and they last quite long with that ring, so that you just need to cast them like once every 5 seconds or so. Some very important items to make this more smooth and work better are the Stuart's Grease for the movement speed, the Messerschmitt's Reaver, you want to stack a bunch of cooldown, you don't have to go like super crazy on cooldown, but you want to be able to reset Land of the Dead so that you can then use the Devourer Aura from Land of the Dead to gain resource. Because you don't have any way of gaining resource in this build besides Land of the Dead. You can include Reaper's Wraps, you can include whatever Bracer, it doesn't really matter in T16 at the very least. And uh, you just want to make sure that once in a while you cast a spell, especially at the start of the run, so that you can get rolling. And afterwards you have the passive corpses that you generate from kills and you have the Requiem Serial Plate which is also bugged. So this one essentially at some point just gives you infinite resources as you can see here. So every time my resource drops it instantly fills back to full and uh, then sometimes it might reset when you don't get corpses for a while. But essentially it has a kind of like stacking up effect that is bugged and essentially gives you infinite resources all the time. So you don't really rely on that that much besides the start. There are a few other nice DPS items like the Crispin Sentence, especially if Land of the Dead up, you can freeze stuff and you get extra damage. So this is nice but not required. There's the COE I just put in there, you can also go with SOJ or even Unity if you like, if you want to have some more consistent toughness because this build is quite squishy without the gold wrap. So if you want to not pay that much attention or sometimes you take your time looting stuff or you, you know, type something in chat, you might lose this buff and you might be very squishy. So maybe a unity might be recommended there. The shoulders are also quite important. They give you the singularity rune on your mages. This allows you to go with another rune which typically is life support. So the life support gives an extra two seconds to the timer. But if you don't have the shoulders yet, then you can just take the Singularity Rune as well. You just have to cast a little bit more often and it doesn't really make that much of a difference. And then as the task is at here, not really super crazy, but it also does help by uh, giving your mages more DPS. So quite nice to have. And that is also pretty much the whole setup. There are a few little tweaks that you can do, as I mentioned. One nice little tag for T16 runs in particular are the Firewalkers. I get a lot of questions about these uh, boots and I reuse them to break doors. So one of the issues that this build has is you don't have an attack. You could fit in an attack for example by dropping the Simulacrum or something like that. But this is about the only skill that you can drop and it actually means some pretty massive damage nerf. So instead you just take those Firewalkers, you run into the doors and they break immediately and you don't have any troubles with that. It's very useful. Here's also a lost time. There is no dedicated offhand item for this build, but lost time is the best one if you want to go fast because you can give a cold damage weapon to your follower and that follower can proc those stacks for you with their attacks. Or you can also activate it with the Bone Armor Harvest of Anguish, which has a cold rune that also gives you some movement speed. So you can stack up up to 60% extra move speed there, 100 from the Stuart's Greaves, 
you have to boot the holder another 30 percent occasionally you get like a condor pylon that gives you the 50 percent from the braces and you can run really fast i have the shot of hatred here in my helm so this is another 50 percent movement speed most of the time quite nice you can get a similar effect with the fragment of destruction which you might actually see in the maxwell guide here so this is typically the better choice but it doesn't really matter and the fragment of destruction has uh, some bugs that can get you killed on hardcore so i avoid it but it shouldn't really happen anyway and i have the stain of sin with the extra globe in the weapon so if you are feeling very weak you can go with the drags of lies for extra pet damage but once you have some kind of solid setup you will not require this and you can go with the plus one progress globe to speed up the runs a little bit and like this i can farm somewhere between like 90 to 100 keys per hour quite comfortably just running through the rifts really fast you blood rush around you activate your land of the dead and you see that your um, resources rise and now you see this requiem seraplate bug kicking in instantly filling my resources here and i i, I can just spam the mages if i want but you don't have to so you have very long duration and this can actually be improved with the passives as well so for example if you play softcore you won't need the final service or if you have enough damage you can also place overwhelming essence and you can go with the standard servitude which gives you yet another 25 percent increased duration for your mages so you really don't have to cast them very much and obviously this makes uh, the land of the dead management much easier too if you're wondering i've also tried running some solo rats in grs of this but this is not really a well suited build for solo gr farming if you want to farm solo GRs, you should play Rafma, which is actually one of the best builds in the game right now for that. But it is kind of hard to do because of the squishiness and the mechanics. They're not really that intuitive. I do have a Rafma guide if you want to check that out. Or if you want to play rats in groups, I also have an older guide talking about the overall concept there. You can also go check it out in the description about uh, rat runs in general, how they work if you are not aware but essentially this is one of the best or actually the best xp meta in the game for the most part the so-called rat runs you can farm up to like gr 130 or higher in 90 seconds this season so at the very high end this becomes extremely efficient people get like over 10 or 12 trillion xp per hour at the high end so it is pretty nasty what you can do but in solo it does not work that well so this is just something to keep in mind this is mainly a t16 build here and you can do solo GRs with this, but you have to uh, work around with the squishiness. So you have to include, for example, Unity. You have to include maybe, say, Archie's Gloves. And these kind of things that help you out a little bit with the toughness. And it's also kind of hard to go really fast. So you actually have slower times and much lower tiers compared to groups. But in general, this build is quite nice, at the very least, for key farming. So this is why I wanted to make that video. I can just recommend this if you're playing a Necromancer. It is pretty nice and hope that this helps you out here so hope you like that video and i see you guys next time